All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, uh, moving information back and forth between amateur radios. Today is a great example. Hey, we are going to tunnel internet protocol traffic through the AX.25 <laughs> transport layer. I know that's a lot of complicated buzzwords, but it basically means we can have an internet connection between two amateur radios. And we're going to use the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to do that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> All right, that one's really obscure. I know that's the bumper music. You know, welcome back. <laughs> if you can guess that one, put it in the comments. It kind of reminds me of this one. All right, and that one's an easy one. I know you guys know that one. All right, welcome back. That's our bumper music. We have extremely low production value here, um, here so we can pass the savings on to you guys. But let's talk about internet protocol over AX.25. Now let's make uh, me a whole lot smaller. I've got two radios with Raspberry Pis hooked up to them. In fact, they are DigiPies. If you don't know what a DigiPi is, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, you've never, you've never <laughs> been here before because this is what we talk about incessantly here. The DigiPi is really a Raspberry Pi card, uh, SD card image. Uh, that you plug into a Raspberry Pi like we have here. This one has a nifty little screen attached to it. It's optional. And uh, it basically implements every data mode you can think of. Every data mode we can we talk about on this channel is, is on that DigiPi SD card image. In fact, if you go out to digipi.org, you can see it there. Now, it is available to patrons of the channel, so there are hundreds of DigiPies out there. I'm kind of interested in how you guys implement IP over AX.25 as well. Uh, you can do this on any old regular uh, Raspberry Pi. You'll need to set up AX.25 first. That's not trivial, and I'm not really going to go over AX.25 setup uh, in this video. That would take 20 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. What we are going to do is take the DigiPi image, make one small change to it, basically delete a uh, or add a route, and suddenly the DigiPies will be able to talk to each other uh, using IP addresses. And we're going to see what we can get away with here. Now, I know there's a lot of Karens out there thinking, well, Craig, you can't do the internet over amateur radio frequencies because encryption's not allowed. And yeah, you're absolutely right, uh, particularly in the FCC region. Um, we have uh, a, a regulation that says you cannot you do encryption over amateur radio frequency, so don't do that. So that means things like SSH and HTTPS, you know, emphasis on the S, those really are inappropriate for amateur radio frequencies. So check with your jurisdiction as to what kind of content is allowed on your amateur radio frequencies. Now, having said that, uh, I've got two DigiPies here. I've got the one in the upper corner here. Can I move it around a little bit? Yeah, that, that's going to be our client. Um, we're going to get a command prompt on that guy and see what we can do. Now, down here... Here, uh, down is the ICOM 705. Uh, this is going to be our server. So we're going to see if we can connect from the top radio to the bottom radio. Um, in fact, that uh, top radio, the client, is actually over there. I don't know if you can see the lamp and whatnot, but there's a DigiPi and radio over there. And we're going to go through the airwaves, through the arcade machine, and uh, talk to this ICOM 705, which has a really stubby dubby, dummy load antenna there. Let's see what we can do. All right, so... The DigiPi, of course, has a management interface. That's what we're looking at here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is uh, go to Linux node AX.25 and press on. Uh, that's on the DigiPi. This is the ICOM 705. And then go to the web management inter interface on the radio that's behind me. And I want you to click on Linux node AX.25. And that's going to bring up the AX.25 interface on these. Now, DigiPi, secretly, I'm going to open a shell over here. You just click shell. We're going to log in as user Pi as per usual. I'm gonna use the super secret password. I'm sure you guys know it. Oop. It's hard to type too. Let's see if I can get it right. Oh, there's packets already going back and forth. I just heard them. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, the packet radio. So there's there's one little tweak I want you guys to make. Uh, I want you to do a sudo remount. Uh, that makes the file system read write so we can modify it because the DigiPi is kind of an appliance. It's not just a Raspberry Pi project. And then I want you to uh, vi a direwolf.node Dot sh. In fact, this will show you a lot of the AX.25 stuff. Uh, there's two things I want you to do. I want you to go to this line where it says win link also, where it says yup. Um, I want you to uncomment this line. So normally there's a pound there. Just uncomment that. 
uh, this line that says sudo route delete. So normally I delete uh, net 44. Now net 44 is an AX.25 or radio network. Um, so normally I delete that route just so ARP traffic doesn't like, you know, sneak out. Um, but in this case, we want to have an internet uh, protocol enabled. We want to have a route out to the radio. So just make sure that's uh, commented out. I think, did I say that right? Make sure that's commented out. Um, so we actually don't delete the route. So put a pound sign in front of that. I'm gonna hit to uh, right quick bang there. And actually what you wanna do is uh, restart AX.25 here. So click off and then on, that way it'll get that, that new, that route will be established or at least won't be deleted. And we'll do the same thing over here on DigiPi 4, which is the upper one. This is our client. All right, so back to DigiPi 4. This is the upper radio that we have a command prompt on, this guy up here. Hopefully you can see some of this moving around here. I'm messing with the video editor. All right, so direwolf is node.sh was, was configured properly. Um, do if config, actually, let me do this. Uh, if config ax0, that's our device. You'll notice that on our client, the top radio, we have an IP address of 44564223. Super cool. And it's on interface ax0. Now, I happen to know our server over here is on 222. Um, so, it's, you know, he's also a DigiPy image. So we should have IP connectivity. Um, we can further check by saying route minus N and see if we have a route to network 44 and what the device is. And we see that here. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Can you guys read that on the Zoom? You know, it's either you either get scrolling or you get this text. It's just so small you can't read it. But anyways, we see a network 440 is on device AX0. We can see that on this line here. So I think we have a connection between the DigiPi 4 up here, which is connected to the ASU 2980, and regular old just plain DigiPi on 222 connected to the ICOM 705 down here. So let's see if we can do something simple. We're going to start... We're gonna take baby steps, okay? We're just gonna see if we can ping these things. So I'm gonna run the ping command. I'm gonna connect from uh, the upper radio to the lower radio. And I know the lower radio's address is 222. Um, so let's just run this command and see what happens. All right, now listen, wait for it. <laughs> I'll turn it up so you can hear it. All right, we got pings coming back. Yeah, so we got three seconds, six seconds, and six seconds. It's just, Horrible, absolutely horrible. I mean, to do anything really cool on the internet, you know, you were talking like if you want to play a video game, for example, it would be like, you know, 20 milliseconds, but we got 6,000 milliseconds, but we're still getting throughput. I mean, we can transfer files, we can do all kinds of stuff. We're not going to get like stream video or something. So don't get excited about that. This is really 1200 baud stuff that we're using. You know, it's possible that we could get 20, uh, 9600 baud too, that might be a little bit faster. Um, so we did it. We actually pinged the upper radio, pinged the lower radio we got three packets back and we're getting about uh what are we getting about five milliseconds around turn around trip on average here um so i put some other you can actually do web stuff um like if you go to let's see if i can get this right um you can use curl and now again when you are doing web stuff don't use https okay that's encryption that's not appropriate for this frequency but use http that's going to be on port 80. in fact you might want to set up firewalls for 443 um, which is an encrypted http port um, just to make sure no one ever you know accidentally sets up a secure connection or an encrypted connection so ssh is out of the question too i mean you'll use, you need to use something like telnet so let's see if we can curl a file and again, I'm going to 222 from the upper radio to the lower radio. And I just put a file out there on the web, on its web server because DigiPy has a web server built into it. Um, and I actually got the text file. And it says, this is a demo of a text file that I'm going to transfer over HTTP, not HTTPS, not just because this is over ham radio, but because I'm too cheap to set up SSL certificates. So there we go. We just actually transferred a file using curl between one radio and another. Um, you know, I mentioned we can't really use SSH, but we can still use Telnet. So I'm just gonna say Telnet to uh, 222. So I'm Telnetting from the uh, upper radio to the lower radio. You can see it's connected. i am turn this down just a little bit. I think you get the idea what it sounds like. It's insane. Um, you can see sending and receiving on those two radios. So a red light is transmitting, obviously. A green light is receiving. You know, and I think the ICOM 705 shows you what's, uh, what's happening there. Um, so, you know, the red part in the waterfall is it receiving a packet, and the not-so-red portions are it uh, actually transmitting a packet. If I remember right. Yeah, I think something like that. But anyways, if you look on our screen down here, we actually have a login. So uh, let's see if I can do a login. Everyone knows the login. 
Now, Telnet's character base is not line based. So every character I type basically goes out as a packet. Um, so it says digipy login uh, is pi. Um, it should prompt me for a password. Let's see if I can get the zoom right. Yeah, it did. The password is going to be the super secret password. I'll enter that here. Now remember, we're telling that again, we're not SSHing in, so that password just went out in clear text over your radio frequencies. Now, I'm not too worried about it because uh, these all these radio, radios are operating between one and five watts, and uh, you know, given the noise floor in this room, uh, it's pretty insane. So anyways, we got a command prompt here. We're using Telnet. You know, I can do ls slash temp just to see what's in the temp directory. I don't know, just to show you how slow this is. I think it's a good example of how not to use the internet, but you know, if this is all you had, um, this is pretty cool to have a command prompt on a remote radio um, using internet uh, internet protocol over AX.25. One thing I wanted to mention is you, you can run the command called AX listen and actually see the traffic. Um, so, you know, if someone wanted to snoop on you, they could run AX listen and see your traffic here. Um, you know, you see little things like, you know, snippets, uh, the login prompt, stuff like that. So this is all of the AX.25 AX traffic going through and it's showing us the encapsulated IP data there. So I just I'm just running this on the on the uh, the lower radio just to see what the traffic looks like. So I'm going to say exit and log out of this. Um, let's just see how long it takes to type exit. Exit. It did it. Okay. Now we got a command prompt back on the upper radio. So we did have a command prompt here, and then we telnet it over to this radio and had a command prompt. We did an ls in its temp directory just for fun. So now we're back on this uh, Yaesu twenty nine eighty, the upper radio. Um, we can actually browse to a website um, using the Links web browser. Now, if you had like a full blown uh, Raspberry Pi desktop, you could actually use uh, Chrome or something. But make sure Chrome doesn't try and use port four four three. Okay. Um, it's got to be all be on port 80, uh, unencrypted traffic. So I'm going to type links and then HTTP colon. Again, I'm not typing HTTPS, but HTTP colon and the IP address of the lower radio. And I'm going to get uh, something called Wi-Fi.php. Uh, the reason I'm not getting the entire DigiPi homepage, because this is a lot of information, what I'm actually going to get is this page right here. So I'm just going to uh, use links to see if I can s display this website. Uh, using a command prompt on this radio. So links, and I'm going to go to that URL. So here we go, making HTTP connection to 4456. And this is 222. Back and forth they go. We're actually making an HTTP protocol connection. Of course, there's going to be a lot of handshaking. Um, you know, there's a lot of overhead for the HTTP protocol, um, but it's a sure protocol. You know, it's going to resend things as needed. Wow, listen to it. That is one long packet. Now at the transport layer at AX.25 level, you know, I don't know how it's managing, you know, the link quality, you know, the trans the, the frame sizes, uh, maximum transmit units. Um, that would be interesting to see because every now and then if the connection's really good, it seems like those frames get really long. So as you can see here, there is that website and I'm just using this, browsing it in a, a command prompt. You know, I can actually change, you know, uh, you know, my SSID and my password and actually submit this, right? I'm not going to because um, I don't want to take it off Wi-Fi at this time, but that's how that works. And then I can hit the control Q to quit. Not control Q. I think we just type regular old Q. Let's see what this one does. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes, we did it. Um, <laughs> I can't think of any other interesting things that's, that aren't encrypted. Those are the like non-encrypted things I could think of. Actually, there's one other thing. I did put a an IRC server uh, on this. Um, so there's an IRC chat server. You guys remember that? It's, it's from the 80s. It's still really popular in the development community. So um, I'm just going to set a variable for my IRC server. And then I'm going to run IRC. And I'm going to connect to an IRC chat server from this upper radio to the lower radio, which has the chat server on it. So I'm just going to type IRC. It's connecting to port 6667 uh, to the lower radio. And actually have an IRC session here on my PC. Um, so we'll see myself log in. In fact, why don't I make this a little smaller? So the bottom radio, the bottom window here is my PC. This isn't a radio. This is just me connected to the IRC chat server. And up here, we've got the uh, Yesu connecting to the chat server and it's working. Yeah, we're getting connected to the chat server. So one channel has been formed. Um, uh, I created a channel called uh, Pound KM6 LYW. Uh, my name is Craiger down here. I'm connected to it. And so on the radio, I'm just going to say join slash join Pound KM6 LYW. Let's see if we can join the channel and chat 
with myself. So there it is. So down here we see Pi has joined channel KM6LYW, and I can actually talk to myself and say, hey, this is a test over AX25. Bunch of exclamation points. Here it goes. From upper radio to lower radio. Let's see if we can see it in the chat room. <laughs> sure enough. Here it is. So we're doing internet relay chat using the internet protocol being tunneled through the AX.25 transport layer using amateur radio. So my physical layer is the is free space itself. It is the permeativity of free space that I'm using for my physical layer, uh, completely wireless, uh, using amateur radio frequencies. So I hope you guys had a good time doing this. Um, I wish I could do, what I might do is another video on really how to set up AX.25 from scratch. And you know, if you're, if you're a patron of the channel, you already have access to the DigiPi SD card image. You can already just, you know, basically click on AX.25 and you're ready to rock um, and, and do this kind of thing. Maybe you got a friend out there um, that you know can get uh, AX.25. You can set up a chat room. And this initially, it occurred to me, it was on the Discord channel. I'm sorry I don't have your call sign, but they're like, well, hey, why can't we do a chat room over a am amateur radio AX.25 bulletin board? It's like, man, I don't know. And I think I think it, 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 it was a suggested that, well, may, hey, why don't we just run IRC and just you know use the IP protocol? There's already chat rooms for the internet, obviously. Let's just leverage it. So there's a good example of us leveraging ham radio technology and internet technology and kind of getting them together. Um, you know, separate but but equal. Let's put it, put it that way. Um, so let's that, that's what data modes are all about. So let's see if we can leverage the internet to do some more cool stuff with amateur radio. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out for me. Uh, none of this would be possible without your help. Um, so these are the patrons of the channel. There's hundreds of you guys. Um, so if you're a patron of KM6LYW, so patreon.com slash KM6LYW, um, anything, anything gets you access to the DigiPi image and you, you'll be a patron of the channel. Um, I got to thank you, the patrons up top here, uh, Fu, Steve, NW2W, Ryan, BS, Jake, Christopher, Ian, Tony, Michael, Jim, Brad, Simon, thank you, buddy, Kevin, Robert, Kevin, that's two Kevins, Harold, Malcolm, thank you very much, guys, I really appreciate it. Oh, we're cruising down to Troy, Jeff, Jeremy, John, with no H, thank you, John, appreciate it, guys. Um, who else do we have here? We got a couple of Davids right in a row, thank you, guys, we got Bud, thank you, Bud, Patty Roche, I don't know why your name pops up, your, your name stands out to me all the time, Patty, thank you, Patty. Ziggy Zog, of course, Douglas, JD, Jerry, Dusty, James, Matthew, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Paul Thomas, uh, ON1KDP. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to remember the nation on that. Um, I tried to guess this last time. Was it Czech Republic? <laughs> Let me know. Soap Suddy, thank you guys. Jeremy Clayton, uh, Robert Jurgen, uh, Lionel, Stefan, John, Johnny, Louis. I don't know, is it Louis or Louis? Thank you, Louis. Uh, Tim, Hun, Adam, Harris, going just this list just keeps going on forever. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so let me know if you guys are doing IP over AX.25. What kinds of services do, are you using, uh, you know, above and beyond IRC, which is pretty cool. Uh, maybe you can get some more interesting chat room kind of thing going, uh, you know, above and beyond AX.25. And uh, let, let's see if we can make something really cool out of this. Let's make a cool service. Let's not just make this a technology project, but, you know, maybe get a bunch of nodes up, you know, to do these cool internet services all over uh, with IP over AX.25. Hey, my name is Craig, call sign KM6LYW. I am in cool California and I am clear. <laughs>